Now, after that Kwatang budget that we've just been talking about, I had two really big guns on from the CBI. Former Director General uh, Digby Jones, Lord Jones, and Vice President Lord Caron Billimoria. Uh, Digby reprised his comments uh, last weekend, and I'm delighted, as you can see there now, uh, to say that Caron is back with us. Uh, you were totally in favour of that growth programme that Tobias Elwood has just said is, 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 is voodoo economics. Uh, it now looks as if it's dead in the water. This country is 1% of the world's population and we're still the sixth largest economy in the world. Historically, we have been the second or third largest recipient of inward investment in the world. We've got one of the top two financial centers in the world and with the second largest services export in the world. We have best of the best capabilities in hard and soft power, whether it's our universities or our manufacturing base. And look at where we are today and the state that we're in. I've been abroad this week and the whole world is saying, what is this great country doing to itself? For two months in the summer, we had a complete standstill while we had the conservative leadership election. We then had the results and we had a prime minister. And sadly, within two days, Her Majesty the Queen passed away. And then we had until the 19th when her funeral took place. And in that period, those 11 days, the whole world was looking at this country in complete admiration and respect. Thanks to that wonderful lady and the amazing reputation that we have as a country. And it's all come crashing down since the 23rd of September. And it's just awful. I, do, I cannot tell you how much it hurts me to see where we are today, given where we were just a few weeks ago. And I think I mean that the main reason for it is the way that this growth program was implemented. It was rushed into, and it's my, my analogy with my own business. I would never make a decision whether it's a new brand or a new product without testing it with my consumers and my customers first. So if you go and rush out a growth plan without having the OBR backing you up, that's going to cause problems and it spooked the markets. If you're going to do things like bankers' bonuses at a time like this, there's nothing wrong with it in principle to make our financial markets more competitive. But not today. If you're going to bring down corporation tax from uh, income tax from 45% to 40%, something that should have been done a long time ago, by the way, it was 40% on Margaret Thatcher, 40% of John Major, 40% Tony Blair, 40% Gordon Brown until he then put that poison pill at 50% before he lost his election. And George Osborne couldn't put it, bring it down to 40% because in a coalition government, he had to left it at 45%. It should be at 40%. But again, not now. There's timing matters. And also, it's not just what you do, but how you do it. And now, the way this is unraveled, and for the Chancellor... All right, Karen, made the full guy. I, I, I want to steer you a brilliant analysis of the income tax argument there and the politics of it. But how worried are you, as Rory McCallion was, my previous guest here, uh, about putting Hunt in to reverse a lot of it, but specifically Truss and Hunt now saying those corporation tax rates, as Rishi had planned, will now go from 19 up to 25 percent. 18 billion pound hit on your members on our British industries. And, and uh, we're very disappointed about that. The whole idea why Liz Truss won her leadership campaign is that she said we cannot go on with a 70 year high of taxes and no growth and low productivity. We've got to grow the economy. And that was absolutely the right thing to say. And to do that, you've got to reduce some taxes. So reversing the national insurance, nobody argues about that. The Labour Party agrees with that. And not putting up corporation tax by 6%, as you said earlier, by over one third. I mean, that damages our investment, that damages our companies, that damages so many things by doing that, makes us less competitive. And how are you now going to reduce taxes to encourage growth if you've taken away one of the elements, key elements of it that helps business? So they've got to get to, the way to compensate for this is they can encourage investment. The super deduction of 130% that companies get when they invest that Rishi Sunak put in was a very good move, but it's being taken away in April. If they say now, any company that invests you can write off 100% of that every yeah. year you invest. That will help to compensate for putting the tax up to 25%. Rishi Sunak, to his credit, said he would do it. He said he was going to do it in October, ironically, but he's no longer here to do it. Let's see if Jeremy Hunt does it. And by the way, Jeremy Hunt is somebody with a huge amount of business experience. He's a very mm -hmm. successful entrepreneur himself. He's got lots of cabinet experience. He's a former sec uh, foreign secretary. I think he's a very capable individual. He's got to steady the ship because we need we need confidence and we need some certainty now, not all this zigzagging, as was said earlier on. Does that mean that Liz Truss stays in place or would you support the idea of 
Liz Truss being a busted flush, better replaced either by Hunt or Sunak or somebody else, so that we collectively can move forward? Or should Truss stay where she is? One of the reasons why we're in this position is you can understand that Liz Truss getting into power in the beginning of September, realizing you've barely got two years to implement a very ambitious plan of, of growth uh, and investment. And, you, and you know, these things don't deliver overnight. And you're in a rush to get on with your plan. But if you rush so quickly and you don't have the trust, let alone of the markets, the trust of business, the trust of your own party, the trust of the country to get behind you, that's what leadership's about. Leadership's about carrying people with you, with your plan. Uh, then when you lose that trust, it's very difficult to rebuild that trust. Now, conservatives don't have long. And if you keep changing leader, that's not a good thing either. And if they're going to do it, they don't have much time to do it. So this is not a good position to be in at all. The most important thing is to allow the new chancellor a chance, at least until the 31st of October, to come out with a plan that is backed up by the OBR. And then we can do it. And by the way, with all this talk about borrowing, we borrowed four hundred billion pounds during the pandemic to save our businesses. That was unfunded. We had to borrow that. Now we're talking about sixty-five, sixty-eight billion, sixty-five billion. Nobody's talking now, Alistair. I haven't heard any of the people you've just been interviewing talking about the help that business is going to need to survive this winter. Sure. They're going to need help with cash flow. They're going to need help with the hospitality business, with VAT being reduced, or of, uh, of tax payments being delayed, or business rates relief basically help to survive, not just the energy help. That's not enough for businesses. It reduces their bills by 40%. Consumers, there's a gap of £2,000, but businesses are going to need help, and that's going to cost money. And I'd Karen, rather have businesses survive than have bankruptcies and recession and unemployment, that, which will be a far bigger problem. 